So here's the outline of my talk. So we saw from the uh, last talk what is higher order masking, and uh, it's well known why it's important. So I'll skip through all the introductory material in this slide. So one important point to note that uh, note is that the complexity of side channel attacks uh, increases exponentially with the number of shares for uh, nearly all of the known masking schemes. Uh, as mentioned in the, the previous talk, the affine functions, they are linear affine or affine functions are straightforward to compute in the presence of shares. And the, the time complexity and random complexity is linear in the number of shares. So the main uh, challenge while designing uh, higher order masking schemes is to secure uh, nonlinear functions and operations. And uh, the various uh, higher order masking schemes mainly differ in how they secure the nonlinear operations. And note that uh, in a block cipher evaluation, uh, only the S-box uh, computations are nonlinear operations. One class of uh, countermeasures uh, uh, is one proposed by Carla and others from uh, FSE 2012 which in turn is based on the seminal work of Ishai Sahai Wagner from Crypto 2003 and its extension uh, by uh, Riva and Proof from just 2010. Uh, this uh, scheme, CGPQ scheme, uh, provides formal uh, uh, security guarantees in the probing leakage model, and it's uh, well suited for software implementations. So the main idea, uh, behind uh, their scheme is to represent a D to orbit S box as a polynomial uh, or uh, field of two power D elements. And now uh, securely evaluating the S box, uh, computing the S box in the presence of shares uh, reduces to the problem of evaluating a polynomial in the presence of shares. While uh, evaluating polynomials over binary finite fields, Polynomial addition, uh, multiplication by scalar, and uh, squaring operations are linear. Uh, so the cost is mainly determined by the nonlinear uh, operations that are secured by the, the technique from Ishai Sahan Wagner and its extension from uh, Riva and Proof. So uh, the time and randomness complexity uh, to secure a nonlinear multiplication or uh, uh, binary finite field, it takes quadratic amount of time and randomness. And there are already uh, several improvements to the original uh, CGPQ or scheme. Yep. So the, the cost analysis uh, of the CGPQ or scheme uh, uh, reduces to the problem of evaluating polynomials over binary finite fields. The cost model uh, that we follow is uh, just to count the, the nonlinear uh, multiplications that are multiplications uh, which are not squarings, and we ignore the cost of uh, linear operations such as uh, addition, uh, scalar multiplication, uh, and uh, squaring uh, because they are relatively cheap than a nonlinear multiplication. So uh, the best polynomial evaluation method with respect to the nonlinear uh, multiplicative complexity cost model is uh, the one with proven worst case complexity is the parity split method. Uh, proposed by Carla and others, which is in turn is based on uh, a method by Knuth and Eve. Uh, uh, whose, uh, the worst case complexity of this method is uh, square root uh, of, uh, is of the order square root of two power D number of nonlinear multiplications. Uh, um, uh, at chess 2014, uh, Coron Roy and Vivek, they proposed uh, a heuristic uh, method, which has a better asymptotic complexity of square root of two power D or D number of nonlinear multiplications. And uh, they also show that uh, it is uh, asymptotically optimal. In practice, the CRV method uh, performs quite well. Uh, to evaluate any 4 to 4 bit S box, one needs only two nonlinear multiplications, and it's shown to be optimal. And uh, to evaluate any 6 to 4 bit S boxes, uh, uh, S box, in particularly all the desk S boxes, it needs four nonlinear multiplication, and three is the, the known. Uh, is a known lower bound. And to evaluate uh, any 8 to 8 bit S box, it needs uh, uh, 10 uh, nonlinear uh, multiplication, and uh, 3 is uh, a known lower bound. 
So that's uh, for the state of the art. So the main contribution uh, in our work is to improve the CRV uh, method to evaluate polynomials corresponding to S-box with respect to the nonlinear uh, mul multiplication uh, uh, complexity cost model. So just to quickly recall the CRV method, so we are given a D to orbit uh, S-box as input. So we need to come up with a, uh, we need to evaluate a polynomial corresponding to, a strategy to evaluate the polynomial corresponding to the given S-box. So the first step is to naturally encode the, the bits, the D and the R bit uh, strings as uh, elements in F2 power D. And then uh, pre-compute a uh, set of uh, monomials. Uh, this, uh, we may require that this, uh, uh, set is closed with respect to squaring because, I mean, uh, because squaring is uh, a free operation, we would like to have this pre-computed set as large as possible. And it must also satisfy a property that uh, we should be able to produce any monomial of degree at most uh, less than 2 power d by multiplying some two monomials from this uh, pre-computed set. Why this is needed? Because this uh, ensures uh, one will be able to get a decomposition uh, as uh, of uh, this form. So in the next step, we obtain this decomposition uh, for a polynomial corresponding to the given S-box, which itself is determined in the, in the course of the, the computation. So in this decomposition, we need the polynomials pi in q hi to have monomials only from the pre-computed set. And uh, how this decomposition is determined uh, uh, by first choosing uh, the QIs randomly, having monomials only from the pre-computed set. And then uh, uh, we set up a, a system of uh, linear equations over F2 uh, by evaluating each, uh, each, uh, this relation at each of the two power D inputs, and then uh, obtaining one equation for each uh, uh, output bit uh, of the S-box. And uh, with, uh, the unknowns are the the unknown, the variables are the unknown coefficients of the unknown bits corresponding to the coefficients of the, the polynomials pi that we would like to determine. So our uh, modification to the CRV method uh, is mainly in the step zero and step one. So instead of uh, encoding, uh, naturally encoding the, the D and R bit strings as uh, uh, in, uh, in F2 power D, we instead, uh, we encode it in a bigger field. And as in the CRV method, uh, step one of the CRV method, we pre-compute a set of monomials, which is close with respect to squaring. And uh, now, instead of uh, requiring that uh, uh, every monomial of degree less than, uh, every monomial of degree less than two power N uh, can be computed by multiplying some two monomials, we just uh, uh, require that, uh, heuristically put the condition that, I mean, uh, one should be able to obtain a decomposition in the step two of, of the CRV method. So, and step two is exactly the same as uh, uh, we saw here. We, need, we want a decomposition of this form, but now uh, instead we work over a big, uh, the bigger field F2 power N instead of F2 power D. So that's about the modifications uh, to the CRV method. And uh, for the analysis, uh, uh, this is uh, M, the number of nonlinear multiplications used uh, is given uh, by this expression. So here we see that the bigger the field uh, we work, then we just need to invest lesser number of nonlinear multiplications in the pre-computation step. But in uh, practice, this comes at a cost because uh, performing field arithmetic in a bigger field uh, is uh, now begins to be more expensive as n grows. <coughs> to determine the parameters L and T, as in the CRV method, we just use the heuristic that uh, uh, in the, the matrix uh, st uh, step, uh, uh, it has full rank, and we will be able to obtain decomposition for any S-box uh, if uh, the number of columns is more than the number of rows. So this is just a heuristic. It works well in practice, but uh, still we do not know how to prove this uh, thing rigorously. So, and then uh, heuristic analysis shows that uh, this is the, the new 
uh, this is the complexity of uh, the improved method. In the limiting case, uh, uh, the complexi complexity is square root of tip over d over d, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, half of that of the CRB method. And, but again, this analysis is only heuristic. And in practice, uh, we can re reduce the, uh, the complexity of uh, many S-boxes. Uh, for 4-bit S-boxes, uh, 2 is already, while working over F2 power 8, uh, I mean, we do, not, we do not get any uh, improvement for 4 to 4-bit S-boxes, for, like, uh, for example, present, because uh, 2 is already known to be optimal over any field. And uh, but what is interesting is for uh, six to four bit S boxes, in particular DES S boxes, uh, we can uh, do with three nonlinear multiplications instead of four. And uh, in a software uh, implementation, performing field arithmetic over GF two power eight or GF two power six does not. I mean, the cost is essentially the same. And uh, it turns out that this uh, improvement from four to three actually it reflects in it leads to. Uh, overall improvement in the running time uh, corresponding uh, to this uh, factor, 3 over 4. And uh, 3 is already known. This uh, 3 number of multiplications for DSS boxes is uh, now optimal. And of course, working over uh, F2 power 8, we do not get uh, any improvement for 8 to 8 bit S box. It's the same as the CRV method. But uh, fr from a theoretical point of view, uh, it's interesting to note that while working over F2 power 16, we can uh, reduce the, uh, the multiplicative complexity to 6 from 10. And still, we have uh, quite a way to, uh, no, we will see that, I mean, we can even uh, reach 3 later in the talk. So we performed a mass implementation of uh, DES. Uh, just recall that DES uses 8 uh, 6 to 4 bit S boxes. In the pre-computation step, uh, uh, the, the pre-computed uh, set of monomials consists of constant, the given input x, and x cube and all its uh, squares, and x power 7 and all its squares. And we obtain a decomposition of the form uh, uh, p of x uh, to be equal to p1, q1 plus p2, where p1, q1, and p2, they have monomials only from this pre-computed set. Now note that we are working over f2 power 8 and not f2 power 6. Uh, we performed a, uh, a software implementation in C uh, and uh, using a code from previous implementations. We ran the experiments on a laptop, but, but we ensured that we manipulated only bytes. And we tabulated the linear functions uh, for reasons of efficiency. And these functions can be stored in ROM. So this is the, these are the timing uh, results. Uh, what we see in the third column, it, it corresponds to the number of uh, shares. So for a three-share input, uh, the loss column represents the overhead factor relative to an unprotected implementation. So it is 13 times lower compared to an unprotected implementation of DES. And uh, it is better than the CRB method, uh, which has a factor of overhead factor of 18. And uh, when there are five shares, we get an uh, improvement of, uh, uh, now the factor is 26 instead of 35. When there are seven shares, it is 42 instead of 58. And uh, when there are nine shares, it is 64 instead of 91. So we see that at least we get uh, an improvement of at least 25% in the overall running time. And uh, the RAM memory required is also now lesser because we need to store, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's now lesser. And also the randomness complexity. So the, 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 the remaining uh, results that I present, they are mainly of uh, theoretical interest. So uh, in spite of our improvement to the CRB method, still the, the upper bound to evaluate any D to R bit S box uh, is of the order square root of T per D over D. And uh, using a different technique, we uh, drastically improve this upper bound to logarithm of D. And the main idea is, uh, the observation that we can pack several uh, independent multiplications uh, in a smaller field in one multiplication or a, a big field extension. And then we, we can extract individual uh, products using, uh, uh, it can be extracted for free 
uh, using just uh, linear projections, uh, which uh, do not cost. So, and you can refer uh, to the paper for more details. And we show that this uh, bound is optimal, and our argument is based on the algebraic uh, degree. Algebraic degree of a polynomial is the maximum Hamming weight of uh, its uh, exponents corresponding to non-zero coefficients. Uh, when there is a, when we perform a multiplication, algebraic degree can at most double. So in order to reach d, we need at least logarithm of uh, d number of multiplications. And uh, we could apply this uh, technique to the case of AES and uh, reduce the number of uh, nonlinear multiplications to three while working over f to power 16. Uh, instead of 4 over f to power 8. So the main idea is to uh, identify the field. Uh, uh, the method is to uh, identify the field of 2 power 8 elements as a subfield or f 2 power 16. So we need to compute uh, the x power 254 if, or f 2 power 8. That's the nonlinear part of the AES S box. So first, uh, using one nonlinear multiplication, compute x cube, and then uh, from uh, this element or f2 power 16, where we x square is already computed for free from x, x cube, and it's uh, combined with uh, an element which is outside of f2 power 8. And then using one nonlinear multiplication, and x power 12 can be computed for free from uh, x cube. So using one nonlinear multiplication, uh, compute this product. And uh, now we have uh, this is equal to x power 14 plus z x power. 15, and then we can extract uh, x, x power 14 and x power 15 for free uh, using uh, linear maps. And then we, using one multi multiplication, we can compute this. So this sequence of operations is motivated uh, from a paper by Gentry, uh, Halevi, and Smart, where they homophically evaluate AES. But that's in a, a, a different context. So. Then uh, we also generalize the previous uh, lower bound results. Uh, in the CRV paper, uh, this lower bound was established to evaluate any D to uh, D bit S box. It needs only uh, one needs, uh, there are some polynomials that need square root of T power D or D number of nonlinear multiplications. And this bound uh, is only over F2 power D and only for D to D bit S boxes. So we generalized it to any d to r bit s box where r can be less than d and for any field. And this is the, this is the bound. And uh, our argument is, uh, based, uh, is based on the co it's, it's based on counting uh, argument as in the CRV method. And we just need to additionally use the fact that projections are linear functions. So to conclude, we the main contribution is to improve the CRV method to evaluate uh, polynomials corresponding to S-boxes in the nonlinear multiplicative complexity cost model. So the main idea is to work over bigger fields than strictly necessary. And this leads to reduction in the number of nonlinear multiplications for many S-boxes. We, uh, in particular for this, now needs only three nonlinear multiplications instead of uh, four over F2 power six. And we performed uh, a must implementation. Uh, and we get an overall improvement in the running time by about 25%. On the theoretical side, we improve the upper bound to now it's uh, to evaluate any d to orbit s box. The complexity is just a logarithm of d, nonlinear multiplications. But this comes at the cost of working at an arbitrarily large fields. And as a, an application of this technique, uh, we showed that AES needs only three nonlinear multiplications over f2 power 16. And we generalize the previous lower bound results to gen arbitrary uh, binary finite fields. So thanks for your attention. Thank you.